Today I'm going to show you how to overclock 3rd gen Ryzen processors on an MSI B450 motherboard. Let's get right into it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So for this tutorial, I'll be using the R5 3600 from AMD, and the reason why I'm choosing this CPU is I believe it gets the biggest improvement from overclocking. You know, if you take a look at the 3900X, for example, that has a max stated boost clock of 4.6 gigahertz, but in reality, if you do an all-core overclock, you'll probably only see around 4.3 gigahertz, whereas this has a max turbo of 4.2 gigahertz, and you can, you know, if you have a really good cooling solution, you can sometimes get... 4.3, even 4.4 gigahertz if you're lucky. So you can actually see an improvement in not only your all-core performance, but also the single-core performance. So that's why I'm choosing this processor. And for the motherboard, I'm choosing the MSI B450 a Pro Max. And the reason why I'm choosing this motherboard is because the Max line of motherboards from MSI guarantees that it's going to be third gen Ryzen compatible. And it's actually a pretty affordable motherboard. Now, I don't remember the exact price I picked it up for, but I believe it was somewhere around $110 or $120. So, you know, for close to $100 bucks to be able to get a motherboard with decent VRMs that's third gen uh, Ryzen compatible right out of the box. You know, I think that's really great value. And so these two paired together, I definitely would recommend for someone who's getting into gaming. And if you want to pick up either of these, either the processor or the motherboard, there will be Amazon affiliate links in the description below. So if you click on those and you purchase anything after clicking on that link, I do get a small kickback. Okay, so before we actually get into any overclocking, I wanna go over a few disclaimers and then I'm gonna talk about what software you're gonna need and then I'll go ahead and meet you in the BIOS. So as a disclaimer, any amount of overclocking or changing of voltages can potentially degrade or even destroy your hardware. If you aren't comfortable with that, then do not overclock anything in your system. I will not be held responsible for any damages that may occur. The settings I'm about to show you work for my specific setup and are not guaranteed to work for you. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the programs you're gonna need. So for this, you're only gonna actually need two different programs. You're gonna need Prime95, which you're gonna use to do a power virus stress test on your overclock that you're gonna be applying to make sure that it's stable. And then you're also gonna need hardware info to check all of the voltages and temperatures as accurately as you can on your chip to make sure the voltage isn't higher than what you want. All right, so when you're in Windows, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is restart and get into the BIOS. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and while your system is restarting, make sure to start mashing the delete button on your keyboard as that's how you get into the BIOS on this motherboard. All right, and so once you get into your BIOS, you should be looking at this screen. And if you're not, you might be seeing this. And so if you see this screen, just hit F7 and it will go ahead and bring you over to the screen that we wanna be on. Now once you're here, you're going to want to go ahead and click on the Overclocking Settings tab or the one that says OC. Now once you make it to this main page here where we'll be doing all the overclocking, the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and enable AXMP. Now what this does is it ensures that your memory is running at the max speed and this is probably going to be the biggest improvement in performance that you'll see because otherwise your memory might be running at the slowest 2133 megahertz setting and you could have memory like mine that's 3200 megahertz. And now you can go ahead and actually tweak the frequency of your DRAM and the timings manually if you want. And that's something that I've done on this system personally, but you know, that takes a whole lot of extra work. And even though you'll see probably even bigger gains out of this than doing an all core overclock, it, it's again, it's a ton of work. And so I have a whole separate video dedicated to that. And if you want to see that, there will be a link in the description below. So you can go ahead and do that. But in any case, once you have AXMP enabled, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hit F10 to save and restart. And then you'll again wanna mash delete to get back into the BIOS. Now, once you're in the BIOS again, go ahead and go over the OC tab again. And then the first thing we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do here is um, go to the CPU ratio apply mode and make sure that's set on all core. Now you can go ahead and set it to the CCX mode if you want, however, it really, we're not gonna be doing CCX overclocking for this tutorial, and I found that most processors, uh, the best CCX really isn't that much better. So let's just focus on an all-core overclock for right now. Now, once you have it set to all-core, go ahead and go over to the CPU ratio and type in 42, and that'll set it to 4.2 gigahertz or 4,200 megahertz. And the reason why we're gonna target that is that pretty much all these CPUs should be able to hit that at a somewhat reasonable voltage. Now, once you've typed in 42 and it's showing up as 4,200 megahertz, 
we're gonna go ahead and go on all the way down to the bottom here and we're gonna go to digi t all power so go ahead and click on that and the reason why we're going over to here is that it has a setting called LLC or load line calibration and the reason why you're gonna want to change this is all motherboards have what's called V droop and what V droop is is essentially when your motherboard is under a big load the CPU voltage is actually gonna lower and you know I could get into the details as to why this occurs but all you need to know is that essentially a little bit of V droop is actually good for stability but you don't want too much because then your overclock will actually become unstable. So if we go ahead and click on this here, uh, you'll notice that you have modes all the way from 1 to 8. And honestly, you know, modes 3 through 7 should work fine. But I found that mode 5 for me gives the best overall stability. And so the way this works is that if you go lower, you know, like up to mode 1, you'll get the least amount of V-Droop. And if you go higher all the way to mode 8, you'll get the most amount of V-Droop. And I've just found that mode 5 seems to work best for me. It gives a moderate amount of V-Droop and it seems to give the most amount of stability. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and I suggest you do so as well. And then once you've got that set, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click on the CPU core voltage here and you're gonna to wanna to change it from auto to override mode. And the reason for that is because we're gonna be setting a static voltage. So, you know, if I was gonna try and be as safe as I could while overclocking, I would suggest getting an uh, all core load voltage between like 1.2 and 1.25 volts. Again, no overclocking or voltage messing around is technically safe, but if you do go ahead and set a voltage of let's say 1.28 volts, that should allow you to hopefully achieve the 4.2 gigahertz that we set earlier. So just for example, I'm gonna go with 1.28 volts. You can go ahead and punch in whatever number that you feel comfortable with. Again, I'm not responsible if you do any damage to your CPU. So now that I've set 1.28 volts, it actually shows up as 1.275 volts here in the BIOS. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on over to the CPU features. All right, from in this menu, we're gonna go ahead and go to global C state control, and we're gonna change that from auto to disabled. And the reason for that is that it should give you a little bit of extra stability when doing all core overclocking. Same for AMD cool and quiet for the same reasons. And then actually we're gonna go to SVM mode, and we're gonna disable that as well because, you know, if you're not gonna be using virtualization as a feature, it just doesn't make sense to keep it enabled. You know, maybe it doesn't do any harm, but I just like to take features that I'm not using and disable them to try and make sure that my overclock is as stable as possible. Now, once you've done that, you can basically just go ahead and hit F10 and go ahead and restart. And, you know, if you do see a black screen for a little bit and your fans spin up, don't be worried. That should just be your motherboard's BIOS applying the new settings and essentially restarting. And it might take a little bit longer than usual, but then at that point it should be loading the new values and you should be booting up into Windows where I'll meet you to go ahead and go over the testing that I'll be doing. All right, so once you're within Windows, the first thing you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is open up the program Hardware Info, which you should have already downloaded. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and click the option that says sensors only. And the reason for that is we just don't need to be looking at anything else. We're just trying to find what the voltage of the processor is, and we're trying to figure out what the temperatures are under load. And so you should be seeing here that uh, your chip is running at 4.2 gigahertz or 4,200 megahertz. And if you scroll all the way down here to the CPU number zero, you'll see a little setting here that says CPU core voltage SVI2. And for me right now, it's saying 1.27 volts, so it's actually a little bit lower than we punched in, probably due to the LLC settings that we used in the motherboard. And you'll see that it actually drops even lower once you start doing an all-core load. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's open up Prime95. And what I like to do is, if you want to stress it even more, you can do small FFT tests, but I do smallest FFT tests because I feel like this stresses it uh, as much as you could possibly ever stress a CPU reasonably. And once you click on that little checkbox there, you can go ahead and click OK. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna start doing a torture test on your CPU. And if you can pass this for, I'd say about 15 minutes, you know, you should be good to run any program ever. It, you, you should really never ever run into a scenario where your overclock is unstable. And what you're going to notice here is that, like I said earlier, the CPU core voltage under SVI2 
is actually dropping. It was at 1.27 volts essentially. Now it's dropping to frequently to 1.25 volts because of the LLC setting that we punched in earlier. Now, when you're running this test, the one thing you gotta watch out for is your temperatures. So with the Ryzen processors, you'll actually have thermal shutdown at around 95 degrees Celsius. So when you're overclocking, you do wanna have a decent amount of cooling, like the stock cooler, you know, even 1.28 volts might be a stretch. But um, what I'm using here is a single fan radiator liquid cooler setup, and it's hitting around 80 degrees Celsius with these settings. So if you have, you know, a decent uh, air cooler, you should be seeing hopefully under 90 degrees. And if you're keeping it under 90 degrees Celsius, you should be good. You know, even if it's hitting 90 degrees Celsius, there's no other program that's ever going to do that. Just make sure it's not going over 90 degrees Celsius because then you're getting close to thermal shutdown and that's just not good. You know, realistically, getting keeping it under 80C would be best, but if you're pushing it to the limit, it might get a little bit higher than that. Now, if your CPU doesn't pass a Prime95 stress test, which will look something like this, well, then you have two options before you. You can either A, the safer option, reduce your clock speed, or B, live a little bit on the wild side and increase your voltage. But again, it's your chip and I won't be responsible for any voltages you punch in. The risk is totally up to you. And this is just a little guy that I put together for settings that have worked for me. So I don't take any responsibility if you damage your CPU by putting too high of a voltage in. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run here and then I'm gonna show you what happens when it passes the test. And you should really let about two tests pass, which should take somewhere around 15 minutes. But in any case, I'll meet you back once it completes. All right, so it looks like it's starting to pass all of the tests here, and it should say self-test, 4K pass. There shouldn't be any errors popping up. And once that happens again, let it happen one more time. It should take somewhere around 15 minutes. And once that happens and your temperatures aren't too high throughout the whole thing, they're under 90 degrees Celsius, hopefully under 80, and it's not having any errors, well, then that means that your CPU overclock is rock solid. And if you're passing right now and you want to shoot for 4.3 gigahertz, you can go ahead and try that. And if it doesn't pass it with the higher clock speed and you just don't care about degrading your CPU, you can put a higher voltage in there if you want. Again, I'm not responsible for the voltages you punch in. It's your hardware. So hopefully you found this guide interesting or helpful. And if you did, be sure to tell me in the comments below what type of an overclock you were able to achieve, whether it's 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, etc. And I'll try and get back to as many of you as I can. And of course, I will see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.